everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Politics Today live on Channels Television. What a Monday that is, it is. I will tonight give you some of your top stories. Let's begin, everyone, by telling you about the continued consultations of the Northern PDP presidential aspirants. Former Senate President Bukola Saraki, governors of Sokoto and Bauchi State, Aminu Tambu and Bala Mohammed. The leaders were in a closed door meeting um, in Yola, Adama State Capital, with the governor, Governor of Interior. And after about 40 minutes, they emerged from the meeting where they briefed the media on the purpose of their visit, stressing the interest of the PDP is bigger than the interest of individual. We give you some of the soundbite that came out of that meeting at some point on the program. Stay with me, everyone. And let me tell you that yesterday on the program, I showed you different kinds of declaration for president here. Uh, those who are the presidential hopefuls. One of uh, the, the, uh, the declarations I showed you was that of a Lagos Pentecostal pastor, Tunde Bakari, who was a running mate to President Muhammad Buhari in 2011 on the platform of uh, the CPC. Now, Pastor Bakari was one of the presidential hopefuls who made their intentions known on Saturday. But a video has since surfaced where Pastor Bakari two years ago said categorically that President Buhari is the 15th president, but he will be the 16th president of Nigeria. He says he will succeed President Muhammad Buhari in office. Well, this is coming now because of his declaration and perhaps what some people are now putting some dots together. What could this mean? Take a listen to Pastor Tunde Bakari. This was in 2019. Take it to the mountain top. If you have never heard it before, I'm saying it to you this morning. In the scheme of things, as far as politics of Nigeria is concerned, President Muhammad Buhari is number 15, and you sincerely am number 16. <laughs> I never said that to you before. I never said that to you before. I make it plain this morning. I let you know it this morning. Nothing can change it in the name of Jesus. He is number 15. I am number 16. To this end was I born, and for this purpose came I into the world. I prepared you for this for more than 30 years. That's why if he wants to run in 2019, I do not oppose. He's still number 15. It's when he steps out that I step in. His assignment is that of Moses to take Nigeria to River Jordan, but he can't cross it. He will take a Joshua to go to the other side and begin to distribute resources to the people of this nation. Well, you can put it on different uh, um, perspective, either prophetic or pastoral as a prayer or assurance of a promise, well, whatever <laughs> you maybe put them out. I'm a journalist and I'm putting this video. It's one of the preachings of Pastor Tunde Bakari in his church, the Citadel Center in Lagos, Nigeria. What does this mean? We'll get understanding in the coming days. And we're hoping that we'll get Pastor Bakari himself on the program in the next few days on his ambition and the issues that have been raised. But before we get into a more interesting matter tonight on the program, here are some of your political roundup stories. Ahead of the 2023 general election in Nigeria, a group under the aegis of MFL mobilization team within the APC in Kogi State has called on all patriotic Nigerians to support the call for Dr. Godwin Emefiele to run for the highest office in the nation. The team lead and national coordinator of the group, Dr. Ahmed Atta, while addressing youth leaders from the 21 local government areas of the state on behalf of the National Executive Committee of the group in Lokocha, the state capital, asked the youth to be resolute in ensuring that they are involved in the task of who becomes the next president of Nigeria. According to him, Emefiele 
Israeli mobilization team is made up of patriots who have come together to showcase the leadership qualities of the current governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Dr. Godwin Emefiele. His policies in the area of education, health, agriculture, industry, social credits have brought about positive transformation in these sectors and strengthened the Nigerian economy. The Central Bank of Nigeria Governor Godwin Emefiele has been described as the right person to succeed President Mohamed Buhari as President of Nigeria come 2023. This was made known by the Iowa Alliance, a northern youth support group conversing for the next president to come from the southeast. According to them, the only way the country can remain united and feel safe as one entity is to produce a president from the south that will heal the wounds of the past and agitations across the country. The leader of the Arawa Alliance for Emefiele 2023 presidency says the CBN governor has positioned himself as a vision driven and focused leader that will assist the youth in unleashing their full potentials. I believe that uh, the power should be shifted, all this issue of agitation should be put to rest and that is why we are supporting the government MFLF from the south. The national leader of the All Progressives Congress, Chief Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has met with progressive governors of the party in Abuja to formally make his intentions known of vying for the seat of the president in the 2023 general elections. Shortly after the meeting, which was held behind closed doors, the chairman of the Progressive Governors Forum and Kebi State Governor, Abubakar Bagudu, says his team will discuss his intentions at their next meeting. The president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Reverend Samson Ayokule, and the co-chairman of the Interfaith Dialogue Forum for Peace, Alhaji Kulesani, are calling on the federal government to urgently address the country's security problems or risk not being able to conduct the 2023 general elections. Both the CAN president and the co-chair of the Interfaith Dialogue Forum for Peace spoke at an inclusive security dialogue in Abuja where they criticized politicians for prioritizing their re-election bids over the country's security. They also asked the federal government to name sponsors of terrorism and punish the culprits accordingly. Elders have lost control of their youth in all the six geopolitical zones. We Fulani elders have lost control of our youth. That's why Fulani kids today are bandits. Kanuri elders have lost control of their youth. That's why Kanuri kids are Boko Haram and Iswap. Ibo elders have lost control of their youth. That's why you find kids that were born long after this, they want to destroy this country. And we saw that in the Southwest. During answers, there is not going to be a military solution to bind a tree. Everybody must get involved. Forget the government. This government has failed. The government should place priority on what they should place priority on. Why have they not exposed those who are financing terrorism, insecurity in Nigeria? Insecurity, if it is not taken care of, there will be no election in 2023. story about the People's Democratic Party and those who are jostling for the number one seat. We told you earlier that the, the trio of uh, the former Senate president and the governors of Sokoto and Bauchi State uh, being in um, Yola, the Adama state capital, where they held a closed-door meeting with the governor, Hamad of Hintiri. And this is the outcome of that here meeting, hoping that they will arrive at a consensus ahead of the PDP uh, presidential primary. Take a listen to the former Senate President Bukala Saraki. We're here part of, as we all move around, we see where the country is. The people of Adama have already spoken about their choice of which party should lead this country. And I think that is the message across the country that uh, it's PDP that the country is looking forward to. But we too must get our act together. And that is why we aspirants that PDP decide to come together and unite and have a consensus approach to the presidency. Yes, we have individual interests. But the interest of PDP is bigger and the interest of Nigeria is bigger. So we'll come to share that with the governor to let him, as you see the three of us here, we are ready to subject ourselves to either one of us the lead and across the, the other aspirants as well. This is not just those of us in the north. Also, we are talking to aspirants in the south so that the party can be united. Because to, to unite a country, you as a party too, you must be united. 
brace up everyone for a major conversation. I guess it's something that uh, most of you have been talking about on your social media and perhaps on your tea tables and your offices before now. But it's 7 p.m. And you know what we talk about. Your biggest story as far as politics is concerned tonight. So it was a money, Monday morning news item across the nation. The attention of the nation sharply turned to the broadcast and the video released by the vice president's office, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, who officially has come forward to state that it will be or like to be uh, the successor to Nigeria's uh, President Muhammad Buhari in 2023. It is your biggest political story for the day, and as such, I will be dwelling on this matter tonight. Perhaps one of the biggest of the presidential aspirants, as far as the ruling APC is concerned, running for the number one office in Nigeria. In case you are unable to get a listen to the full video of the Vice President Declaration, let me allow you to relax, listen to it carefully. And I want you to take note of some of the key points that he raised in, uh, in his speech. And we look at those things that he said and the things that he did not say, and we dissect them tonight, the issues thrown up. Take a listen to the full video, it's a short one, of the declaration by Professor Yemi Oshimbajo. Dear Nigerians, for the past seven years, I have served as vice president under a true Nigerian patriot, a servant of the nation in war and peace, and a man of integrity, President Muhammad Buhari. We have, together, worked through some of the most difficult times in the history of our nation. But we have remained focused on securing the country and providing infrastructure and growing our economy. As stipulated by the Nigerian Constitution, our tenure will end next year. In this period of seven years, I have served the government in several capacities, and I have, at the direction of Mr. President, represented our country in sensitive, high-level international engagements. I've been to practically all local governments in Nigeria. I've been in markets, in factories, in schools, in farms. I've been in agricultural, mining, and oil-producing communities, in the Delta, in Kebi, in Enugu, in Bon, in Rivers, in Plateau, and Undo, and in all other states of the Federation. Listening to the diverse experiences and yearnings of our people. I've visited our gallant troops in the Northeast and our brothers and sisters in the IDP camps. I've felt the pain and anguish of victims in violent conflicts, terrorist attacks, flooding, fire, and other disasters. I've been in the homes of many ordinary Nigerians in various parts of the country. I have sat with our techpreneurs in Lagos, Edo, and Kaduna, with our Nollywood and Kaniwood actors, with our musicians from Lagos, Onisha, and Kano, and I've spoken to small and large businesses. I stood where they stood and I sat where they sat. I know their hopes and aspirations and their fears. And I believe that in those hopes and aspirations are the seeds for the great Nigeria that we all desire. I believe that the very reason why the Almighty God gave me these experiences, these insights and these opportunities is that they must be put to the use of our country and its great peoples. Which is why I am today, with utmost humility, formally declaring my intention to run for the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on the platform of our great party, the All Progressives Congress. If by the grace of God and the will of the people I am given the opportunity, then I believe that first we must complete what we have started radically transforming our security and intelligence architecture, completing the reform of our justice system, focusing on adequate remuneration and welfare of judicial personnel, and ensuring justice for all and the observance of the rule of law, rapidly advancing our infrastructure development, especially power, roads, railways, and broadband connectivity. 
providing an excellent environment for businesses to thrive, taking the agricultural revolution to the next step, especially mechanization and developing the farm to table value chain, making sure that the government, its agencies and regulators serve the business community, creating a tech economy that will provide jobs for millions of young Nigerians, enhancing our social investment program to a full-scale social welfare program, completing the promise of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty within this decade, completing the task of ensuring that all Nigerians, male and female, attend school, reforming our educational system for relevance to the challenges of this century, completing the task of universal health coverage for all, and strengthening the capacity of states and local governments to deliver on their respective mandates. Above all, front and center of our efforts will be the provision of jobs and opportunities for our young people. I now most solemnly and respectfully seek the support of fellow Nigerians everywhere in this land and the diaspora, young and old, male and female, in the great and exciting journey that we have ahead of us. I seek your own support. We will, working together, established by the grace of God, the Nigeria of our dreams, in a few short years. We will build on the foundation laid by our predecessors. We will need to move with much speed, intentionality, and perseverance towards the vision of a prosperous, stable, and secure nation. I'm convinced beyond doubt that we have the creativity, the courage, the talent, and the resources to be the foremost black nation on earth. Let us now birth the expectations of greatness conceived generations before us. Let us build a Nigeria where the man from Newi sees the man in Guzo as his brother, where the woman in Wari sees the woman in Jalingo as her sister, where the love of our nation burns alike in the hearts of boys and girls from Boko to Yenogoa, where everywhere in this land is home for everyone, where our diversities, our tribes and faiths unite us rather than divide us. Let our tribes become one tribe, the Nigerian tribe, where all are treated fairly, justly, and with respect, where all are given equal access to the abundant opportunities that God has bestowed on this nation. It is time. God bless and keep our republic and her great people. God bless you. You heard that is a full length of the past, uh, Professor Yemi Oshibajo declaration released today. Now, immediately that declaration became public, during reactions and trailing the declaration in the nation's capital, Abuja. Here, jubilant supporters of the vice president took to the street. Take a look at them and how they were able to react to the declaration. in the northwest state of Kano. The coalition of Kano support group for Oshibajo in Kano State took to the streets to drumming and cheering to express their joy, thanking the Vice President Yemi Oshibajo for answering their call for him to run for the office of the president in the forthcoming general elections. That was in Kano and uh, in the northeastern state of Yobe. Youths there also 
took to the street and um, they were celebrating the Oshibaja declaration. The claim is the only man capable uh, in the APC to lead this nation. Take a listen. The professor himself, now that he has decided to run, is as a result of the, the enormous outcry of Nigerians calling on him to run. Ordinarily, he wouldn't care to run. He, he is comfortable with living his humble life. But you see, it's not going to be about money in 2023. It's going to be, it's, it's a war now. The war is against, is against uh, the destruction of Nigeria. Because Nigeria now needs someone that will make sure that the country is put back into order. So it's not going to be about money. Whoever brings money is wasting his time. It's going to be about who the people want. And we're going to cast these votes. We'll stand and defend the votes. We'll escort the vote to where they will count it. And we'll make sure that they announce our vote. That is in the northeast region of the Yobe State here. So in the south, south, this is Cross River State. This is what it looks like. The supporters of Yemi Oshibaja embarked on a peaceful rally to declare their support for Professor Yemi Oshibaja presidential declaration for the number one seat in the country. Speaking in Calabar, a Cross River State capital, after a peaceful rally, they explained that Professor Oshibaja, for them, is the best choice for the next president as he has served in several capacities. Perseverance are coming to register their solidarity, to register their support for a man they feel, a man they know who has been tested, who has been tried and trusted, a man they feel will take Nigeria to the next level indeed. A man who has led Nigeria in various capacities, starting from his time as Attorney General in Lagos State, starting from his time as um, legal advisor to former Attorney General of the Federation, a man who has um, been behind most of the social intervention programs of the Border Administration, a man whom we are happy that the President has given an opportunity to demonstrate his capacity to show that, yes, indeed, he's not just a professor by academic standard, he's a professor by all standards. A man whom I've worked with for some years, and I can say, if given the opportunity, he will take Nigeria to the promised land. Well, that is in Cross River State. If we go also to Taraba State, similar thing and similar sight and sound were experienced by the Oshibajo supporters uh, and were saying that they've been waiting for him to declare, and now he has done so in, in Taraba State. All right, then, that's what happened in some parts of the nation that we are able to capture as far as uh, Professor Yemi Oshibajo's declaration today was concerned. But what does the Yemi Oshibajo declaration mean? Well, number one, two citizens who is now willing uh, to take over from his principal, uh, President Muhammad Buhari, in 2023. Tonight. Let's dissect these issues and really look into the Oshibajo, the declaration, the APC, the choice of the presidential uh, candidate and the 2023 election. I'm being joined to discuss these issues by Chief Williams Omarevo, a chieftain of the APC, a member of the Oshibajo Strategy Committee. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. And from, our, uh, from Kano uh, City is Professor Hafiz Abubakar a former deputy governor of Kano State and a national coordinator of the Oshiba's Jaw Support Organization. He joins us live from Kano. Thank you so much, Prof, for joining, me, joining us tonight, and it's good to see you. 
Well, let's begin here with uh, Chief Morivo, who is a chieftain of the APC and also part of the Oshibajo team. Now, uh, there are a lot of things that Professor Oshibajo said that I'm able to put out from the issue of continuity to loyalty to his experience to learning about the problems of Nigeria, the hopes and uh, potentials of the country, the real reason he became vice president because as far as Professor Oshibajo is concerned and the declaration, being the vice president was not the end game. He's leading this country. And he says, if it's the will of the people and that of God, he wants to be Nigeria's president. He's talking about continuity. He's talking about uh, made promises of jobs, security, agriculture, and economy uh, to Nigerians. And he's talking about the potential of Nigeria's greatness. Let me begin with you. For those who say uh, in those standby that will listen to that, well, it's the best candidate. Is it for the APC or for the PDP? I mean, as general, in general. Well, he, he still he sounds, he's, as, as, as you can see, he remains the best candidate, no, not just for APC alone. In fact, if you look at the, the spontaneous reaction, it isn't just the APC, it is general. Both I mean, I, I must confess, it does look like your team who put this put together properly because we see this. Is this spontaneous or this were orchestrated? And it was not orchestrated. This was spontaneous. spontaneous in some of these states. Yes, most of the states, because a lot of you know, support groups are all over the place. You have the one that are national, you have the one that are regional, you have states. So, and the expectation is that will he or he will not. So several phone calls all over the place, whether he will declare or he will not declare. Why did it take him this long? Of course, he, he is in government. He is in government and he's working under, uh, you know, his own boss. He will not just look like, I mean, as a sitting vice president, he will not be declaring like any other person. He has to weigh the indices, what it will cost to the, uh, to the stability of the government. So he needed time to do internal consultations before coming out to This declare. consultation, does it include the president? Has the president given him a go-ahead to run? Uh, of course, before he, will, like you can, you can see, he, he, de he definitely he consulted with the, you know, the governors. Of course, before he will ever attempt to conduct, uh, you know, consult with the governor, he must have uh, been able to sit one on one with the principal to say that this is my interest. I want to run. Let's go to the former governor of de uh, the de former deputy governor of Kano, said Professor Hafiz uh, Bubaka, who is joining us from Kano. Thank you so much, Professor, for joining us tonight. Give us a sense of what this means for the APC. Uh, a lot of people who have said, oh, the, uh, the vice president met with the governors of the APC, and the following day, uh, Bola Tinubu, uh, who was uh, the, a principal to the vice president some time ago, also met with, uh, with uh, the governors. Now, the question of loyalty, whether or not uh, Tinubu should be running and Oshibaja should be running, uh, considering what, I mean, is out there that uh, uh, Oshibajo uh, would, uh, can also always say he has the backing of uh, Tinubu for becoming Nigeria's vice president. Give us a sense of that conflict, or uh, the issue of loyalty that people have raised about Oshibajo and Tinubu's relationship. I guess we're having some issues uh, con with connections with uh, Professor Bubaka, but we'll, we'll get back in a short while. Let me ask the same question I was asking uh, mm. the former deputy governor. Mm. The issue that the clash of what uh, the supporters of Oshibaja and supporters of Tinubu, if you hear them speak, oh, disloyalty, how can your boss, former boss wants to run? I mean, he, he, he gave you the opportunity of becoming vice president. What is in the mind or on the mind of Professor Oshibaja in this respect? Well, it is like him, well, on several occasions when you see him speak, he still remains a member of uh, the Bola Tinibu, uh, you know, system. He has never denied it. But you see, most people fail to understand that the presidency of Nigeria, it is, it is not a presidency of, a, a, of an individual or a section. People just believe that since you have, don't forget, the law of providence. Sometimes, you know, God could use anybody to promote someone. So he has been able to expose Osibajo to Nigerians. And Nigeria has seen the quality in Osibajo. Hence the clamor to have him sit there as Nigerian president. I do not think 
it will create any bad bite. Because for me, as several persons, it is believed that it's even better that if, if I can have it, let my, 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 my immediate, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 subordinate, you know, you know, also have it. I'm not sure it is meant to slight anybody. Okay, we're we'll due for, we'll we'll for a commercial break. Mm. We'll go on a break, and when we come back, a lot of the issues are being raised, uh, thrown up from Professor Oshibajo's uh, declaration, which I listed, issue of continuity, mm. issue of loyalty yes. to the president and to the nation, mm. and a lot more on issue of continuity and uh, the promises that is made. We'll take a break, everyone, and when we return, my guests I see here, Professor Abubakar and Chief Amorivo. They will be giving us insight into what is Oshibaja declaration means and the APC's tough choice to make when it conducts its presidential primary. We'll find out how they will go about that huddle. Just in a moment, everyone. Go with us. Thank you so much for staying with us, everyone. It has been a sharp end to speculations, weeks of uh, uh, anxiety about the vice president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, and his presidential ambition. He ended, or today, with a declaration this morning. And tonight we're being speaking with Chief Williams Amarivo, a chieftain of uh, the APC and a member of the Oshibajo Strategy Committee. And from Kano is Professor Hafiz Abubakar, a former Deputy Governor of Kano State and the National Coordinator of the Oshibajo Support Organization. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on tonight. Let's pick up our conversation from where we dropped it. Um, first and foremost is um, the issue of loyalty. The vice president said he served president and the nation in different capacity. How does that uh, look in the scheme of things? Would that affect the choices of Nigeria or the delegates that are going to elect the presidential candidate of the APC? Well, I think uh, on the issue of loyalty, you a lot of people uh, had always expected uh, Rancora's presidency. I, I think that for the past six uh, and a half or seven years that they've been together, th there is no single case of disagreement among them. And I believe that he's been, he's been behind the president, all the, you know, all the, you know, uh, you know go government policies that the but the number one man put together. He's been supportive. He's been carrying on as a sitting vice president to an incumbent president. There has not been any case, even if they had to uh, talk on issues, it's not public. And I think that several persons would naturally appreciate that kind of, uh, you know, cooperation in government. In most, uh, in, you know, in most countries, you see disagreement, uh, you know, several issues, uh, you know, crop up, and then you see the. Of course, we have witnessed in this country where you have uh, the president and his own vice, you know, at the later stage, uh, you know, turn apart. All right. Let me go to uh, the former deputy governor of Kano State, uh, Professor Abubakar. Give me an understanding. You know, people say, "Oh, he's the, the, the best man for the job." What, what, what does your group mean by that? Well, well, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity for us to hear me. Please go ahead, I can hear you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, hear our voice with regards to the candidacy of uh, Vice President of Simbanjo. It's our belief that uh, having spent the number two man in the government, and having, by the provision of the Constitution, chaired the National Economic Council, assignments that have been given to him by his uh, principal, and most importantly, his performance, we believe he is the man of the moment in terms of our country and where our country should head to. So um, there are a few people also who have worked with the president. 
who have also thrown their hat in the ring, uh, been in, the, in government for almost as long as, uh, of as much as Professor Shibajo has also been. But the question that some people will raise when uh, Professor Shibajo talked about the issue of continuity is whether or not there have been capitalization on the promises that have been made by this government. And when he talks about continuity, the question is performance. Honestly, for quite a number of us, the issue of uh, continuity with what? There is a man who possesses all the qualities and attributes of good leadership. First, what you need in a leader, what is key, it's character. This man has that fine character that is needed. He's God-fearing, he's godly both in his words and his in actions. He is a core professional. He is a man of action. So, our belief is the key issue of competence. Competence attached to track record has it. And one of the other key issue of leadership is the issue of listening. This man listens. And any leader, good leader, that thinks is serving his people very, very carefully. So ours is an issue of a competent leader with the required character and very importantly with the understanding of the issues in the last seven years, the opportunity that he had to chair the National Economic Council, whose membership composed of the governors, the governor of the central bank, minister of finance, and other key government officials, and the only uh, uh, official forum where you have the interface between the federal government and the uh, states, uh, and, and the key issues of the economy of the country is being discussed, I, I think that gives him a very, very good opportunity for him to understand the issues. Yes, you, you could, could have been in government for quite some time, but certainly not in this government, and not the opportunity to understand because the issues differ. And we all know what our country has gone through in the last seven years or more. So our main focus is that this is a man in our deeper inner beliefs being prepared by go. That's why we call him a man of the moment. So, and people will perhaps ask the question that is part of the team that has made promises of power to Nigeria, promises of uh, economy, uh, prosperity to Nigeria, and promises of security, which are some of the things that uh, the vice president raised, but it cannot... Uh, uh, take himself away from the equation. Uh, that's why I was asking the question of the, 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 the question of performance, whether or not the APC have been able to fulfill the promises that have been that have made into the office. How difficult would the performance of the APC be for him? And the question of whether or not when they go to the primaries, does he have the clout enough con uh, concerning some of those whose name have also cropped up in the, in the race? Well, it, it, you are absolutely, I agree with you, you cannot separate him from the performance of uh, APC, but we have no the separation of powers and the, uh, the, the separation of authority. That's a law of management that when you assign a responsibility to anybody, you must give him an accompanying authority before you hold him accountable. And, and we all know the position of the UIC, uh, I was in one, and uh, both constitutionally and administratively, one does not hold that you know, accompanying authority which legally and fundamentally allows us to hold one accountable. That's the position of number two. So it's not feasible for you to be able to see uh, uh, the, the competence, the, 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 the space, the, the, the capacity of any number two uh, given the provision of the system. Certainly there is a, a liability that one has to carry 
uh, because this is his own uh, government. But all the same, uh, whoever, I'm sure his colleagues in the National Economic Council, uh, all the ministers and so many others, uh, and the youth. Why are the youth of this country who are, who, who, who are the seats for the tomorrow clamoring? Genuinely, there is no single candidate across all the parties that has the well wish and the desire from the youth and the women to, 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 to go for this office than him, simply because of the way he handles the social investment program. Just a special program, which is by the grace and the discretion of his boss, but Given the assignment, he handled it very well. Look at another very important assignment, the economic recovery uh, program, which was as an ad hoc assignment given to him as a result of the COVID-19. All nations in the world face very serious economic challenges. Uh, we are not uh, an exception. He was given that very exceptionally difficult assignment, and he did well. Nigeria was able to scale through within some very few months uh, to get out of recession. So that glimpse of capacity, of competence, of teamwork, of, of capacity to listen and to understand the issue, what is the most important. Listen to him as a key speaker, as a commentator, as an attendant to a conference with uh, capacity to give even a goodwill. Whenever you confront our vice president, he displays an exceptional understanding of the issues. And that's why we have a lot of hope that given the space, given the authority needed, uh, he is likely to perform exceptionally well, better than many of those aspiring to that position. So the other leg uh, which uh, you could, because of the latency, I tried to put the two questions together so that you can answer it. Um, uh, we had, of course, apologize to our viewers for the latency in the uh, line of communication with um, uh, Professor Abubakar. But, Prof, I was asking, I wanted your reaction on the, if you look at the names of those who are gunning for the ticket of the APC and whether or not it comes down to capacity, the political capacity, in the party to be able to get the party's ticket, considering the names that have been thrown up in this race. What are the hopes of Professor Shibajo, who's been a technocrat, who was a former commissioner, and uh, compared to those who have been entrenched in politics of the party for several years, how does he compare? How does he be able to compete with these uh, heavyweights also? Well, one of his key, one of his key assets one, okay. Showing this to you. One of his key assets, I can tell you, is his relationship with some of the key power blocks in the party. Remember, I told you, by constitutional provision, he chairs the National Economic Council. And over these seven years, his leadership, I can say, has been rated by all members of the National Economic Council as excellent. And who are the key members of the National Economic Council? The governors. And you know within our party and all parties, the governors are very key holders of significant part of the power block. To his principal, uh, who everybody believes that uh, they have an excellent working relationship, he's been very loyal, so it is all our expectation that his principal has nothing against him, which is another very important you know, power block. And you, there is another even excellent also power block within the voting block of the APC in terms of those members of National Assembly, former members of the National Assembly, you know, uh, com, you know, statutory members of, of, of the voting block, like myself. I hold a vote. And so many of us actually Oh, the voice has always been for him. So I, I, we have very high hopes that uh, uh, this will get him a very good chunk of the votes uh, of, of the APC during the primary. And besides, as you, you know very well, uh, almost of recent, uh, APC has always been going on consensus. For that, he will do even better than even the... Uh, uh, direct or indirect primaries. 
All right, thank you so, mu uh, so much, Professor Hafiz Abubakar, the former Deputy Governor of Kano State. Thank you so much indeed uh, for your time tonight. Apologies to our viewers for the delay in the line of communication with uh, the former Deputy Governor there. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. Uh, let me come back to you, Chief Amarivo. Mm. Uh, I mean, I asked a, a very critical question because at the end of the day, is who has the capacity to get a party's ticket? Mm. But I'll show you. Uh, the faces and the names of those who, who have uh, obtained form and the potentials, some of those who have not obtained form, but their names have been thrown up. You can see them all, uh, all there on the screen. Some of them have been in politics for as much as 20 years or more. Um, it comes down to one thing, how they can battle for the ticket of the APC. The latest man in the, in the block to announce his interest is Professor Yemi Oshibajo, of course, and being the vice president, it will be the man to beat, isn't it? And how, uh, what are the assurance getting into the arena? The kind of delegates is just a vice president. There are those who have been former governors, who are sitting governors, they have that block of delegates mm. uh, that will come for, I mean, give them those votes. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, if you look at um, the Nigerian politics of today, you know that there are poor. Uh, power brokers. There are various blocks, uh, may, may various interest groups, and if you can, if you look deep, discover a man who has been vice president for six, seven years should have made friends. Like he rightly said, Osibajo has made friends among the various, uh, you know, stakeholders, you know, from the governor's forum, from the national assembly, and across. I mean, you know what I mean by that. So, vote cashing is as a result. Of of the number of friends that you have, you have been able to make. Uh, don't forget, the, 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 the stakeholders who determine issues in APC are not people you are going to be able to buy with your bag of money. They, they are also on their own, having delegates behind them. For instance, if a governor decides for you, you can be rest assured that at least the delegate from that state will obviously be for you. So. Uh, out of, yes, uh, some, of some apologies to cut in into that mm, mm, mm. some governors uh, or some some of the aspirants are already boasting of uh, governors who are in their support mm. and you know the reason why they will talk about governors who are supporting them is because the governors often come with a unanimous delegate votes of course it's the, it comes like in a block mm. so every governor that comes almost get almost 100 percent of the votes for a certain candidate um for your group uh, and your shiba your group how many governors can your group post of at, at the moment? Where strategically, that is in your support. Yeah, strategically, I can tell you we have more than enough governors to sway the votes in Africa. More than, more than enough means how more, many, more how than many states? En, more than enough. I know that we have over 15 governors in sympathy with the Sibacho. For, for several reasons. They just look at him as somebody, as, you know, as, you know, as somebody who is, who is being part of them who have been sharing them, who have made things easier, for in most cases. And I think, I think that um, a, a man who will be vice president who has been interacting with a lot of these governors will not, will not be uh, you know, caught punting. He should have made contacts. He should have made friends from among them. And I believe very strongly that before he comes out, he would have had assurances from that block. And of course, other, other, you know, other stakeholders, particularly from the National Assembly. On a final note, the president, uh, vice president was talking about that God has made him go through these experiences. He's learned all of these things, uh, perhaps of the big task of leading this nation. And the question is that, you know, one man uh, can be so determinant of who becomes the flag bearer of the APC. And that is his principle, the number one citizen, yeah. the president, Mohammed Buhari. What are you hearing? Does the VP have the vote? Does he have the confidence of President Buhari? Well, I will, I will say, I will say that of, of course, yes. I will say that you, you know your president. He will definitely not want to stop anybody from aspiring. I think, I think that he has some confidence in his vice president. Several speeches he has made, and of course, like you can see, he has been deploying several critical areas to so solve problems. I think that he has some trust on him. And I think going forward, 
he will prefer the trust to, to be the trust, the of, trust him of him being his VP it, one on yes. one side. The trust of it, succeeding, succeeding uh, having him to succeed yes, is another the thing. The trust of him. Has there been any any kind of indication to, in that respect? Well, we, like you can, if you could, if you look very well, of course, you know, is um, is uh, you know later day, uh, you know, interaction with critical stakeholders. He's been going all over the place, unlike before, and he's been delivering on on the on, you know, on the president's uh, you, know, you know mandate in several sectors. Um, well, I won't be able to say constructively that the man has given him to go. They say, okay, you are my candidate. Of course, the president is the father of the nation. And of, within the party, as a leader of the party, he ought to also be able to give, uh, you know, other aspirants some leverage to express their interests. Chief Williams Amariva, one of the leaders of the Oshibaja Support Group and uh, a chieftain of the APC in Delta State. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Thank you very much for having me. Just before we go, let's tell you about some of those uh, political stories happening across the country. The governor of River State, Houston Wicke, who is also a presidential aspirant on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, has also been going around town. Today, or earlier today, he was in uh, Maduguri in Burano State, where he met with PDP stakeholders, and he's been talking to them about his ambition about the PDP and the issue of zoning and what the issue, the major issue of ethnicity, religion may pose uh, for uh, who becomes the flag bearer of the PDP. Take a listen to the River State Governor in some weekend. Our economy is in shambles. You require somebody who can withstand and make our economy to stabilize. And therefore, I believe that you need a PDP committed person, a PDP committed uh, person to fly the flag of the party. You reap where you have sowed. No, it's not true. You reap where you sow. It's not true. I have sowed in PDP, and therefore, I will reap from uh, PDP. I've never sold in any other party. All through my life as a politician, since 1998, I've been sowing in PDP. And now that the fruit has germinated, I will pluck the fruit because I sold for it. So, let nobody come and tell you he's not a Muslim. Not, nobody come and tell you he's not a Christian. Nobody can deceive us uh, alone. Nobody. Nigerians are aware that everybody is suffering. Nigerians are aware people are dying. Muslims are dying. Christians are dying. Northerners are dying. Southerners are dying. We need somebody that can stop all this. And that is me. Governor Yin some week there, speaking uh, to PDP stakeholders in Borno State. And that is how we end the program tonight. Many thanks, everyone, for watching. I'm sure Kimali. Bye for now.